Don't forget to point at me when it's my turn to talk. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship with Middle Spring Presbyterian Church. Let's take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds in preparation for worship. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on this communion Sunday and 24th Sunday of Pentecost. Today is the day in the church's calendar that we celebrate our traditional fall communion. So in my understanding, for all of us gathered here, both here in our space and for you all online, Middle Spring has celebrated communion on this third Sunday of November every year since their founding. It's that way because that's when the circuit rider who had the ability to serve communion was coming through town. So third Sunday in November and third Sunday in May. So we join together in a long tradition. I'm going to guarantee you communion has never been (laughs) celebrated this way before um, on the traditional Sunday with all of us, some of us here and some of us uh, out there in virtual space. But it's a joy nonetheless. And we are united by the Holy Spirit nonetheless. So this morning... 
uh, as we celebrate communion. Think of those who are online for all of us here and think of those who are here for all of you online. Take a moment to share the peace of Christ with one another as well. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Let's join in prayer. God of righteousness, you overcome those who abuse their power and lift up those who suffer. Even now, when evil seems to hold sway, we know that you will have the last word. Keep us faithful as we wait and watch for your coming realm, where you will welcome all your children into your kingdom of justice, peace, and love. Amen. In response to God's goodness, the Spirit bids us worship. So let's join together in the call to worship found in your bulletins and on the screen. Children of light, children of the day, lift your eyes to the Lord. Let us not fall asleep. Let us keep awake and be sober. Yes, for we belong to the day, serving Christ who died, so that we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another. Let us put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Our gathering hymn this morning is Holy God, We Praise Your Name. We'll be singing verses 1 and 2 for you all online, and um, here we will be listening to the music with joy-filled hearts. Hear this lesson from Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Friends, you heard what Paul said. We are destined not for wrath, but rather for salvation. Therefore, let us turn and repent, confessing our sin to the one who loves us and who is eager to save and bring new life. We confess together. Lord, you have made us stewards of your creation and commissioned us to carry out your work to the best of our ability. But we have not served you with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. We withhold our gifts and live in fear. Have mercy upon us, we pray. Make us bold to use our talents for the sake of your kingdom until you come in glory. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. We are children of light, and therefore we belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ lived for us. He died for us. He was raised for us, and he prays for us. Keep awake, therefore, to the cleansing, transforming work of the Holy Spirit in your life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and raised to new life in him. And we respond together, Thanks be to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We are going to go and visit Luna for our words uh, children's sermon. And Luna is going to be thinking about this First Thessalonians text with the children and what it looks like to build one another up and to encourage one another. So let's go say hi to Luna. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. This morning, the lesson that we read just before the prayer of confession was from 1 Thessalonians, and it's chapter 5. And 1 Thessalonians is one of the letters in the Bible that the Apostle Paul wrote. And in that letter, in chapter 5 especially, he wants to assure us that we are... God's beloved children, that Jesus will always be our Lord. No matter what, he will always be our Lord. We have that promise. We have that assurance is a word. We can trust that, what Jesus says. And then the Apostle Paul goes on to say that because we can trust what Jesus says, that he will always be our Lord, that we then should be encouraging one another. And what that means is when you encourage someone, you build them up, you teach them how to be a disciple of Christ specifically. And the other thing that we hear in a lot of our lessons today is that God cares about what we do. Not just about what we say, but God cares about what we do. And our actions are something that we can use to encourage one another. So the way that works is when we see one another doing things that are important to God, we learn from each other. So I wanted to read you a, a poem I found online. This is a poem written by a man named Larry Claus. And it's called, When You Thought I Wasn't Looking. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you hang my first painting on the refrigerator, and I immediately wanted to paint another one. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you feed a stray cat, and I learned that it was good to be kind to animals. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you make my favorite cake for me, and I learned that little things can be special things in life. When you thought I wasn't looking, I heard you say a prayer, and I knew that there is a God I could always talk to and trust. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you make a meal and take it to a friend who was sick. And I learned that we need to take care of each other. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw you give your time and your money 
to help people who had nothing. And I learned that those who don't have, who have something, should give it to those who don't. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw how you handled your responsibilities, even when you didn't feel good. And I learned that I would have to be responsible when I grow up. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw tears come from your eyes. And I learned that sometimes things hurt, but it's all right to cry. When you thought I wasn't looking, I saw that you cared and I wanted to be everything that I could be. When you thought I wasn't looking, I looked at you and wanted to say, thank you for all the things I saw you saw when you thought I wasn't looking. When I read this poem, I thought sometimes of the things that I see you all at home do, especially when you are with me at the children's sermon here in the church or in Sunday school. And I've seen the way you have invited your little sister to sit in your lap or little brother to sit next to you from time to time to make sure they feel uh, okay and safe. And I've seen the way uh, uh, you hold your sister's hand when walking down the aisle down to come and sit with me. I've seen the way that you make space for children who are new. And when I see you doing those things, I feel encouraged and I learned something from you about what it is to be a friend. So today's lesson tells us because Jesus loves us, we can take risks in doing things to show other people what it is to be Jesus' disciple. And we can encourage one another with our actions because God cares about what we do. So Luna and I are going to pray with you. Thanks for listening. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for all the ways that you love us. And because you love us, we can love one another and support one another and encourage one another. So help us to find little ways every day to show that we love you and that we love our neighbors. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you next week. In preparation for hearing God's word read and proclaimed, let us pray. Come Holy Spirit. Open our minds and hearts this day, that we may be illumined by your living word and walk together as children of light. Amen. Our second lesson to us this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25. This is a continuation of the parables that Jesus tells us in this chapter. It's the second of three. So here now, the, what's sometimes called the parable of the talents. Jesus said, For it is as if a man going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the banks, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So, take the talent from him 
and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have more, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the after-school activities available to my kids at school is rock climbing. And two of them have entered into this endeavor. One more, well, both of them really seem to enjoy it, that have, that have started rock climbing. So when they first told me they would be rock climbing, especially when they would be leaving the safety of the, uh, the rock climbing gym wall at Mercersburg and going out into the real world to rock climb, I, I have to admit, I had some fears about them doing that. Uh, I, but, you know, Priscilla at some point tried to explain to me that they do everything they can to minimize the risk. And I heard her, yeah, 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 but, you know, she's 16, what does she know, right? She's 18 now, but this was when she was 16. But I have sought to listen and sought to learn more about rock climbing and, and uh, the joy they have in doing it and uh, how much they appreciate challenging themselves, that's all really good for them. I recently, uh, well, about the time they started rock climbing, a documentary came out called Free Solo. And this is about a rock climber named Alex Hanold. And it is about, it is him being filmed free soloing El Capitan, which is a 3,000 foot vertical wall in Yosemite Park. Free soloing means that you do this with no, no safety precautions in place at that moment. So no ropes, no harnesses, no, I guess they have chalk and climbing shoes, right? That's it. Well, yeah. So I thought, oh my gosh, this is insane, right? And fortunately, my children think that is also insane. So whew, thanks be to God for that. Recently... I saw a little interview with Alex Hanold, and he explained in that interview some of what he understands about risks and consequences. And you need to know that scientists have actually studied his brain, and his brain is not normal. He does not process fear like normal people, so he's got that going for him. But in this interview, he explains that he spent about 10 years preparing for this climb that he did. And he said, by the time the cameras are filming me, there is almost 0% risk that I will fall. And this is the difference between the risks and the consequences. He's very aware that the consequences of him falling do not change. If he falls, he will die. End of story. However, with all the preparation he has done, the risks are very, very small, in his opinion. I'll have to take his word on that. So, when so he, you know, he practiced, he did it, and uh, again, he is able to differentiate between risks and consequences. And I think there's something for us to hear about that difference in as we think about today's parable. So in this parable that we have with Jesus today, chapter 25 of Matthew, the context in which this is set is Jesus talking to his disciples uh, about what will happen at the end of days. And he has told his disciples that they will see the Son of Man return, but that about that hour and time, no one knows when that's going to happen. And then he tells us, since we don't know when it's going to happen, this is what you need to do. And he tells these three parables to the disciples about what it looks like for them to wait for whatever period of time they need to wait. Last week, we had the parable of the bridesmaids, and we understood from that parable that part of our waiting is to do so with patience and to be always ready. And so we talked about what it looks like in our context today, to be ready. In this parable, we're taught something different about what it is to wait. So clearly we have the two servants who receive five and two talents, and they have been busy using their talents, 
waiting for their master's return. And just so you're aware, a talent was a tremendous amount of money. So this isn't a real story in terms of servants being entrusted with money. A talent was a thousand denarii, and a denarii was a day's wage. So we're talking about 5,000 days of wages, which I didn't do the math, but I'm not sure that I will actually work 5,000 days of my life. I don't know. So it's an incredible amount of money. They, do, they use that money to make more money. They return it to their master. He is pleased. The third servant has weighed the risks of failure. He has thought to himself, the biggest risk is that I will fail. I will use the money my master has given me, and I will not be able to return to him any kind of return, and, and maybe I won't even have what he gave me. So he believes that's the biggest risk. But the parable shows us that he has believed wrongly, because upon hearing that his slave did nothing with what was entrusted to him, the master goes ballistic and calls him worthless and throws him into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It seems an outsized reaction to someone's paralyzing fear. And it makes me think that maybe the, the third servant had reason to be afraid. So when we start drawing parallels between this parable and to how we are to be in service to God, I believe that the first thing we need to recognize is that the relationship we have with God is not the relationship this third servant has with his master. The parallel that I believe we need to draw is the understanding that the master, while away, entrusts things to his slaves and desires them to be used. The God that we serve does not care about the results so much. And in fact, you heard that particular master say to his slave, you could have at least given it to the banker and then you would have gotten a little tiny bit and I would have that return. The slave's biggest sin, if you will, was that he was unwilling to take any kind of risk. And so at the end of the parable, when we hear that those who have much will be given more, and those who have little, even that will be taken away, it's not necessarily in reference to what they have, their material good or their talents, their gifts. It's in reference to the amount of courage they have in using those gifts. That's how I understand this parable on one level. There's a lot of levels that parables are meant to be read on. This week, I had the opportunity to uh, have a conference with my friends in Honduras and to hear from them. And they were telling us about what has gone on in the country since Hurricane Ada. Uh, not a hurricane for them, a tropical storm Ada, but still just devastating. News reports say that the damage in Honduras is akin to the damage that was done by Hurricane Mitch in 1998, which was simply again, devastating to the Honduran people and their economy. Even still, when we go to visit, they can point out places in Tegucigalpa where damage occurred and has not been fixed from 1998. So we listened to our friends in Honduras tell us about their plans for responding to Hurricane Ada. And these are people whose material resources pale in comparison to what we have. These are people for whom travel is difficult. It's also a country being ravaged by COVID and they do not have the medical resources we have. And they were so full of hope for what they could accomplish in the country. They have plans for asking every Presbyterian congregation to give whatever they can of clothing and food and money they have buses that they have borrowed or rented and are gearing up to take them into the countrysides, into the places most affected. And then this was just what made my heart sing in reference to this parable, is my friend Alex said, we don't know what the results of our efforts will be. It could be that we will receive one bag of rice and one shirt. 
And that's all. But nonetheless, God will be pleased with our efforts and we will take those goods and ourselves into these areas of need and we will seek to do God's work. And I just am in awe of who they are and of the ways that they choose to respond. And they trust God for the results. And they trust that the God that they are serving is not this hard and onerous and exacting slave master that we find in this parable, but that God is generous and by the power of the Spirit will bless their efforts, double and more than doubling the effort that they put in. I do wonder as I think about the slave master that we do find in the parable, who does not say that the servant is wrong about him being a person who gathers where he does not scatter and reaps where he does not sow. And I wonder if too often we put our resources into the hands of people like that. And if too often we are thinking that, well, we might recognize that the risks of us using our material goods in service to people who don't have the best ethics it's not a great risk to us. We'll probably get a return, but what might the risk be for someone else, someone who doesn't have material goods? I wonder if too often we are ready to risk too much in unjust systems and in ways that ultimately will hurt the world. The consequences of us not risking investing in God's kingdom are that we will not ultimately have the full joy that our master intends for us. When we use our resources to invest in God's kingdom, we enter into the joy our master intends, into the joy of salvation. That's what my friends in Honduras are experiencing. They will go and they will be present to those who are hurting and suffering. And they will have joy in doing so. When we use our resources to serve ourselves, there's probably not all that much risk. But the consequences are great, that we will fail to have the joy God intends of us sharing the good gifts we have been given. So we each have gifts to use. Those are financial resources. Those are talents, singing technology, whatever. I can name for each of you sitting here and each of you online many gifts that you have. So let's ask God to help us use them in service to God's kingdom, investing in that which will fully and finally come to fruition in God's own time. Amen. Friends, this brings us to the time of our offering. So thank you for all the ways that you have given to Middle Spring. Uh, for you online, or well, everybody here too, uh, you know the ways that we receive gifts from you through uh, our Give Now button on the website or by mailing them to the church or bringing them here on a Sunday morning as you feel comfortable. So thank you for your being willing to invest in what Middle Spring is doing in order to further God's kingdom. We seek to be good stewards of your gifts and we are grateful. There is another refrain that we're going to try in our bulletins. So in response, oh, uh, sorry, one more thing. Next week is our traditional um, Thanksgiving uh, service, and it will also be a Sunday that we talk about the Presbyterian Women's Thank Offering. So I'll have more information for you about that offering next week, but we will be receiving that offering as a church for the Presbyterian women to share with Presbyterian women uh, globally. And so I'll have some information for you about how that offering is often used. Friends, in response to God's goodness, we say together, thank you, O God, for the gifts you give. Enable us to be good stewards of your abundance. I'm going to come down below and share prayer concerns with you from down there. I'm not here. Can you all hear, hear me okay? Okay. Can you all online hear me okay? Okay. 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 We're good. <laughs>
Thank you. As we enter, uh, as we come together to celebrate communion, I have joys and concerns to share with you. Uh, please feel free to, for those of you who are online, to continue to lift joys and concerns in the comments for us to share. This morning, our church flowers are given by Pinky Nye in loving memory of her husband, Dick. Uh, we are praying for Presbyterian disaster assistance in our Presbytery prayers, and I will say that Presbyterian disaster assistance has already begun their work in Honduras. They are working with uh, the Presbyterian Church in Honduras and some other partners there to get aid into Honduras. So I give thanks for their efforts. Please be in prayer for Trinity United Methodist up on Walnut Bottom in our local churches. And then also for specifically uh, Lirio, de los, Lirio de los Valles, uh, Lily of the Valley Presbyterian, which is in Comayagua, Honduras. And I understand that all of the Presbyterian churches... Uh, structures at least are safe in that all of the homes that Carlisle Presbytery has built in Honduras are intact, so we give thanks for that. Uh, but please do continue to hold not only the folks in Honduras but in Central America in your prayers. Um, Honduras alone lost something like 300,000 acres of crops, 26 bridges were destroyed, and another dozen or so damaged many, many, many people displaced from their homes. And that's just in Honduras. And there is another storm uh, off the coast of Honduras. Um, Hurricane Iota is churning away off the coast. So please continue in prayer for these folks. Uh, just one more joy to share. Two more joys. Three. Uh, Kaylee Elizabeth was born to Amy and Mike Zimmerman uh, and uh, granddaughter of Larry and Barb Singer. So we give thanks for new life in their home. Uh, we have Zeke home, so we're glad for that. And Stevie Nordi also shared that her cousin Julie, for whom we have been praying, she had a brain aneurysm some weeks ago, is home and uh, out of rehab, continuing to recover. So please continue in prayer for her, but is at least home, and we give thanks for that. Are there any other joys that you all here would share? Any joys in our comments to share? Okay. Okay. Concerns then to share with you. Dick Weller will hopefully be discharged on Tuesday. He was not yet discharged this weekend. They did not feel he was quite strong enough, but they do hope that he will be discharged on Tuesday. Continue in prayer for his healing. Also for Shirley, uh, restrictions about visiting have been tightened at Encompass because of COVID. So uh, she is not able to be there as regularly as she would like. So please, prayers for strength for her and patience for both of them and healing for Dick. Uh, so we look forward to joy with him coming home. Uh, Dick was worshiping with us online last week. So Dick, if you are worshiping with us again, we are holding you in prayer mightily. Pinky Nye asked for prayer for her granddaughter, Lauren. Lauren was also diagnosed with leukemia and is in Hershey Hospital. It is also a highly curable form of leukemia, so she is hopeful that uh, Lauren will be cured and uh, will be coming home soon. She should be in Hershey for at least another week or two, they expect. Please be in prayer for my grandmother. Uh, her name is Ursula, and she had a really bad fall about a week ago and ended up with a couple staples in her head. That's all healing well, but the fall really seems to have um, hastened her decline. She'll be 97 on November 20th. So Derek and I had the opportunity to go visit with her on Friday. She did not know who we were, but that's okay. We spent a couple hours with her and talked about whatever she wanted to talk about, which was nothing that I could understand, but that's okay. We, we just had a nice conversation. And most importantly for me, I was able to give her a hug and tell her I love her and so I, I pray that um, she is at peace and pain-free and in God's good time, she will be brought home. So please be in prayer for Ursula, for my mom and dad and, and my sisters, uh, Ursi and Cindy and, and all of our family. Thank you. I appreciate that. I just want to remind you that we do have a full prayer list on our website, and you can get to that under the Members tab. It is password protected. If you need the password again, please let me know. I do my best to keep that updated at least once a week, so you can go to that and uh, be reminded of all the people for whom we are praying and see if there are any updates for any folks on the prayer list. Any other concerns you all would like to share this morning? Guess any concerns? 
Eileen asks for prayers. Eileen asks for prayers for her cousin George, uh, who's 86, and he fell down some stairs this week and needed 11 stitches to close the wound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for George. Let us approach the table of grace, holding all of these joys and concerns in our hearts. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. In this sacrament, we remember Christ's sacrifice for us, and we rejoice in the outpouring and the renewing of his grace every day. And we look forward to the final culmination of all God intends for humanity, for all of creation, full and final reconciliation and peace. In this feast, we are strengthened to serve our Lord unto the end. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, when your people did what was sinful in your sight, you sent prophets to pronounce judgment and proclaim deliverance. You called them and you call us to repent and return to you and live in ways that honor your holy name. But through it all, you never forsake your promise to love and lead. Therefore, we join our voices with all the faithful whoever si who forever sing to the glory of your name, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus preached the parables of your kingdom, O God, calling us to be faithful with the gifts entrusted to us so that we might enter into your presence with joy experiencing what you desire for us. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be to your glory. Keep us watchful and awake as children of light, encouraging one another and building up your church while we await the coming of your great and glorious day. Enable us in word and deed, in heart, soul, strength, and mind to be the body of Christ in the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of salvation poured out for you by my sacrifice. Anyone who drinks this cup does so in remembrance of me. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to grab your own elements and lift them together. 
Every time that we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again, and he will come again. If you are with one another out there or even in here sitting next to a, a friend or a spouse, I invite you to serve one another because you came together, it's safe. If you're out there, you might serve one another. If you are here with us, uh, let me serve you if needed. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us join together in prayer. Holy Spirit, you have filled us with your life. Christ our Savior, you have embraced us in your love. God, our Father and Mother, you have fed us with your grace. Empowered by you, O Holy Trinity, 
May we join hands to walk your path of justice and mercy. Be our guide and our stay. Blessing and honor and glory to you, holy, holy, holy Lord. Amen. Just a few words for the week to send you out with. Uh, we will be again receiving uh, offerings of food for our military boxes. So Dorina Saul and the, on behalf of the deacons will be putting those together. Uh, there is a box on the bench outside as we have been doing for all of those collections you've been invited to bring. Uh, Dorina says, Twizzlers, Swedish fish, <laughs> yeah, Swedish fish, thanks Dorina, crackers, nuts, chips, jerky, candy, pretzels, gum, breath mints, all of those would be wonderful to have for our boxes. If you would like to give uh, money for postage instead, uh, that would be great too. Or if you'd like to give money and, and have Dorina buy things, you've done that in the past, thank you. So uh, so thank you for all the ways that you will uh, help us, help us uh, remind our military folks that we hold them in prayer and are thinking of them, especially in this season. So, and thank you, Dorina, for doing that. Advent devotionals, the devotional uh, booklet that we are putting together as a congregation will be ready by the, hopefully by the end of this week. If you have not yet sent in an Advent devotional, you may still do so. So if this is a place that you want to risk using your gifts and to share something of who you are and what uh, brings you hope or joy or peace or love, please do that. Uh, I'll probably put it together finally on Wednesday. And so Every story that has been shared with me has, has brought me great joy, and I'm thankful, grateful to all of you who have shared and encourage you who have not yet. This is one way that we continue, even apart from one another, to uh, grow together is by sharing our stories. So you still have time to do that. The congregation will be meeting next Sunday, and a full call for the meeting was issued in our midweek email that went out on Thursday. So that was all the information about all the action we will be taking. I am required by our bylaws to just read you one portion of that call. We'll be doing all the normal stuff, but we are seeking to change the church bylaws to allow us to meet with the people who are here in person as normal, but also with people who will be present via uh, virtual means. And so this is the change that we seek to make to our bylaws. In the section, Article 3, titled Meetings, we wish to add a letter I that will state virtual meetings. The session may hold a meeting of the congregation virtually or through a combination of in-person and virtual means. The virtual medium must allow for simultaneous oral communication among all participants in the meeting. The session shall only choose to hold a meeting using virtual means when, for a period of time which has no known or foreseeable ending, it is deemed unsafe for persons to gather together. Notice that the meeting will be given in a virtual medium, must be given in accordance with letter A of this same article. We also seek to change letter H of that article three to add that in person at a meeting may be uh, a virtual connection, again, in accordance with uh, letter I that we're adding. If you have any questions or concerns about the changes we are seeking to make or would like a full copy of the church bylaws, please let me know and we will provide that for you. Uh, the virtual medium that we will use this time is Zoom, just because that's what we've been using and people are used to it. So in this week's, this coming Thursday, you will receive an email that will have the Zoom invitation, a link you can click on, it will also have instruction for downloading Zoom, for getting connected on Zoom. If you just want to call in on the telephone, you can do that. Your normal old house phone can connect you to the meeting. Joe Brett has joined choir fellowship that way many a time, and it works well. So, uh, and you, can, you will have the ability to listen and to speak and to vote using your telephone. Our session is working on all these details. So. Thank you for being willing to be present, uh, especially because we will be electing our ruling elders and deacons and an auditor, and I'm grateful to those who give their time in this way, and you saying yes to them and to the service they are offering is a way to be of support and encouragement to them. So please make every effort to join. Those are all the announcements that I have. Anything else for the good of the body from anyone? Then uh, let's stand in body and our spirit to sing our sending hymn, which is Holy God, We Praise Your Name, verses 3 and 4. Thank you.
You are God's called and sent people. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive each other. Above all, clothe all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and evermore. Amen. Friends, it was a joy to worship with you today, no matter where you are. Let's sit, be seated for our prelude, postlude. Amen.